right, all right. Well, yeah. cheers, William. We know what day of the week it is. Yes. It's Friday. Friday. So, <laughs> so cheers to you. Cheers, you Joanne. Well, it's and time cheers. for our happy hour discussion. And cheers to the American people. Mm-hmm. Cheers to you lovely people who have tuned in. Some of you might not be American, and that's okay. We're all right with that. We're happy with that. Uh, we want to invite all of our international friends, too. Um, so, so, William, we've been going at this for a little while. Um, I was just wondering, like, is anybody watching this? Not that, well, not that I can. I don't want to pretend. I don't, I don't care. But, you know, I mean, I'm curious. Well, interestingly enough, uh, we actually have a, a lot of viewers in India are, are, are watching us. Um, that's certainly, uh, it depends on the subject, but, okay. uh, but, uh, but, but in the, since we started, if we, if I, ad I added up all of the views since we started and it's been what, about two months now or, or so. I think so. Yeah. A little, more, mm -hmm. a little longer than that, but we've exceeded 40,000 views and, and, um, that's pretty healthy. We're about 3000 a day. And uh, your last, or the last one we did on taxation, um, 14,000 views uh, in the last two weeks of that. And some people care about their pocketbook, William. Yes. <laughs> and simultaneously, we had the little 10 minute clip going on taxation itself, and that had 4,000 views. So mm -hmm. uh, we're doing pretty well. And uh, I think that uh, uh, we, we're not just. Uh, Talking, we're just not. We're, we're not, not just, just talking. talking in, we're not just talking into the wind here. Well, no, this is a conversation, so yes. they're never talking in the wind. There's two of us at least. You know, it's a two-way street. You're never talking into the wind, and I would, I would, I would hang out if it was just the two of us. That's fine. I'm enjoying. I'm enjoying our discussions, but it's lovely to have some um, some folks who are joining in too and seem to be enjoying themselves. So I don't know. For me, I feel like. What, one thing that I get out of our conversations is it's um, a different type of conversation in a way, you know, it's like, like exploratory, it's open, it's, you know, I, I don't know, I, I, I feel there's a philosophical tinge to it, too, which I feel like we might people might be hungry for. I don't know. Um, that's kind of what I, I, I feel. I feel like it's a different type of conversation than you hear in a lot of places. Well, I think people are ready for something more than just pure politics. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, there, there is a philosophy involved in all of this. Where are we going? And, you know, and what are we doing, folks? I mean, this is kind of important stuff. And yeah, uh, so, yeah. I, so think I think it's a fair and it's a fair question. And, you know, that's been a fair question at any time in history for someone to ask, by the way. I mean, like, I think every every generation in its moment feels like, well, we're at a turning point. There's a, you know, I probably you probably had a version of that in every generation, right? It's just that we all have a, a different type of one, you know? And ours is, I think ours is becoming quite, I don't know, specific in a way, this sort of, this sort of, well, the divisiveness thing, but also this feeling that in some ways we've, we're having a hard time talking to each other, um, uh, you know, that that type of thing. And I guess... To kick off what 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 I've been kind of ruminating on this week a little bit, like it's just been bouncing around in my head, is um, you know the recent court cases involving political figures, um, not just Trump but also Biden and all these and all the conversation about all that stuff. And you know it's kind of interesting because I feel like we've we've lost a way in our discourse of having like an objective truth at, that everybody agrees to it's almost like this um it's almost like it's almost like there's no it's not there's no two plus two equals four you know it's it's kind of there's some fundamental facts that seem to nonetheless be questioned and questionable and it it, it again I, it, I i for me it's it's an extension of our conversation we had a couple times ago about the court right and to me no matter what the court is a space where um, there's kind of an objective truth that 
I mean, I'm not saying courts are perfect and God knows we're not, but they're not and they're, they're fallible and everything. But the, the process itself, the due, due process, the whole point of it, I know you're a lawyer, but I mean, like the whole point of it is that there's, you arrive at as, in, in as fair a way as you can, a kind of decision based on evidence. And there's kind of an ob objective truth that there, that has generally been broadly accepted. Um, and it's been interesting over the last week or two, because that's been like, begin has begun to be in, in just even in a regular trial court begun to be fundamentally challenged this whole idea that there's like a an objective sort of truth that's been found and so that was kind of bouncing around in my head and kind of disturbing me a little bit this week because i i feel like if we don't have a, a way even through this you know a kind of belabored process of arriving at that thing that's like kind of scary you know it's one thing to say oh the media is divided and oh whatever i mean okay i mean that's a problem but you know, but the court and due process and our trial process is like, this is the whole point of it, right? This is what it's constructed to do. And it's, it's, it is a kind of cornerstone of how our society works that people by and large generally trust in that institution or have a sense that that process arrives at a result that generally people can accept. So for me, that kind of bounced around in my head this week as beginning to feel like some sort of center may not hold there, you know? And, and so anyway, that, that was what I wanted to bring this. I mean, that was what was bouncing around in my head this week. And then the last thing was that, you know, yesterday was the 80th anniversary of D-Day and I was watching the, um, you know, the ceremony and everything. And it was very moving with folks who, 10 years from now, probably won't be at the next anniversary of D-Day. We're now moving from a memory into history of that amazing sort of day. Um, and I felt like as you look back to that era and many points in the 20th century, you did have definite moments of objective truth that were pretty much accepted across the board, really. I mean, people accept a narrative about that time. Um, then I don't, I don't know, I don't know how we get there from where we are now, um, at least in this country. So these are my profound, deep thoughts on this Friday night, William, that I bring to you. <laughs> it's probably already creating a headache, but nonetheless, I bring them to you um, with our with our alcohol in hand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, you know, it's interesting as as I've listened to you. Um, of course, the, you know, right off the bat is the what you're saying about the court system itself is that that's the fundamental bedrock of our society is justice that, i think so that we have that we have justice uh uh with, within our society whether or not it's provided by our governor government or not but that but that that there is justice and and i think by and large uh the system is designed uh to to arrive at at the truth it's supposed to it's an adversary system you have two sides they each uh go at it they 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 can present their evidence and you have 12 people who have at least taken a note to 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 adhere to the truth and to render fair verdicts and and i think that um, most of the time the judge is also uh respected enough in in these proceedings to to direct the uh, uh, the proceedings uh, in a fair and impartial manner, and and so so having said that, there's two things. One is that this verdict was being challenged before it was even given to the jury. I mean, it was already uh, being spun that uh, this was a biased jury that it, you know couldn't possibly get a fair trial in in New York, even though this is uh, Trump's hometown. But 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 more than that is, is that to extend that out into the electoral process generally, if we can do that, well, because we should have a, an electoral process that does the same thing, that mm -hmm. it helps us to arrive at truths yeah. and, and, and just verdicts that we, we, we vote and, and, and we, we make our choice 
and and that's supposed to give us safety and security and uh, predictability and 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 uh, and, and 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 comfort in, in having a uh, a process that that works. Well, it doesn't work if the uh, if everything becomes false. If, 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 and, and I'm not yeah. just talking about Mr. Fake News. I, I, you know, I'm not talking about one side of this at all. Our, 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 our political system itself has gotten to the point to the to the place where it is hard to to discern the truth. When, when you on a day to day basis, when you're looking at the proceedings of Congress and you're looking at the, yeah. the various laws that are being mm-hmm. considered That's and true. passed, and and yeah. you look at the functioning of the of the executive and the administrative branch and and all of the um, due process factors that go into governance, uh, it's it's getting hard to trust it. That that. Uh, that this this election is going to give us a fair result. I don't know. It's uh, but you know when 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 we started this, I remember a few weeks ago, you commenting on the fact that you like the jury system, that mm-hmm. you know that that the you have twelve people and they hear the facts and they they render a verdict. Well, I do too. I mean, I've I've stood in front of a, a, a many jury. Yeah. And and I've and I've argued my case and sat down and listened to the judge instruct them and see them walk out and come back in and fortunately most of the time uh, I, I I was able to get a good verdict uh, but not always and sometimes it was uh, sort of devastating but uh, but nonetheless I think that the, there there are lessons to be learned here. That that we that we need to recognize that not only must we heal our court system, like we talked about last week about the possibility mm. of of making changes in the Supreme Court, but that we also must make changes in our governance, how we govern ourselves, and and that particularly uh, deals with the with the uh, executive. And and how the executive works, and you know the 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 Constitution is fairly silent on the executive. It just says right. it's vested in 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 the presidency, and uh, and that his job is to uh, administer the laws. Mm-hmm. It's not it's not a very complicated set of facts. So uh, I I I've wondered how would be the best way to 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 organize an executive and uh, mm-hmm. and and I've and I've thought about it and and one of the first things is that currently the way the, the government is just so large and and ah. such a large portion of the government if you look at you know you have congress itself and if you look at congress is sitting up there on the hill and you have maybe at best uh what ten thousand people working for the Congress all mm-hmm. together? I mean, that's all the employees, everybody else, and and far less than that for the court. Uh, so so the, these thousands of people that work for the government are all working for the executive branch, in one way or another. They 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 are, and 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 how that branch works, uh, I think is is, is critically important uh, to to the manner. In which we we experience our freedoms in the, in this country, and that we are that we are happy with our government, and and so that said, uh, I've I've said before the um, uh, the the first thing I would do if I were president, and I'll play that <laughs> I'll play that game for a little bit. <laughs> uh, my my dear friend Joe White, my one of my mentors, who's now passed. Mm-hmm. But Joe White uh, said the first thing that a president should do is to have a lookalike contest and, ah. and and invite people all over the country to submit their photographs or video, submit a video uh, of them reading the Gettysburg Address or something. So they're all doing the same thing. And 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 the, the winners of this, some 10 or 20 people uh, who most look like the president, I mean, physically, uh, and and also sound like him and uh, 
uh, can have the appearance of him are all invited to to Washington D.C. where the photographs are taken with them with the, with the new president, but they're wearing the suit and the president is wearing the 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 the, uh, the jogging outfit or something. Oh, and, funny! And, and so uh-huh. that, so that you have all of these photographs, and what this would allow the president to do would be to travel the country anonymously. Ah, uh, oh, how funny! And so if someone says something, huh. no, 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 I, I I was in the lookalike contest. I didn't even get to go to Washington, or I did, and here's a picture of me and the president. But uh, no, I'm not the president. But but in order to have the ability to travel and to go places and to find out what is going on in the country, how can that happen today? I mean, you know, everywhere the president goes, he, he not only goes in a caravan you know, right. that's a half a mile long, including ambulances and fire trucks and, and everything else. Uh, but even when, like, uh, you know, we're near the airport here. And when the president lands here, uh, you know, they, they don't only have his one helicopter. They bring three helicopters. So when that helicopter takes off from the airport to go to wherever they're going, there are three helicopters so that they don't know which one to shoot down. Uh, it's, but, right. but but in any case, the uh, I, I always thought that Joe's idea about a lookalike contest would be would be one of the first ways to start off <clears throat> the administration of the presidency. Well, uh, that would be hard. That would have been easier in a time before television, right? Back when, like in Lincoln's period or whatever, because now with TV, it's too hard to perhaps. Not. I mean, yeah, it's hard. It's hard to really have a lookalike that could actually. Except yeah, that pass, the second you know? part of that, though, is to also kind of disappear. And, right. and you know, and, and, and I, one of the things um, that um, on, when I was on LAPD at, the, at that time, particularly, the LAPD policy was that the person who went before the press was the most knowledgeable person. Mm-hmm. On, who, who worked the case? Who was the lead investigator on the case, or or whatever the situation was? Who was who was the field commander? Instead of there, it always being the chief that is in front of the television camera. So it would be the same way with running our government. Um, the the the, uh, the the second thing that I think the president should do is to appoint his or her two assistant presidents. You you have the constitutional vice president, who is the uh, who is the president of the Senate. That's the the function uh, of the of the vice president. But there is no way that the that this massive government can really be really administered with one person uh, at, at the top. It 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 with a with a with a cabinet of, of well well not only that but. The cabinet itself doesn't represent all of the agencies. There, there, mm-hmm. there are another dozens of agencies that that are not really within cabinet officers, uh, you know, as as such. So I think that uh, if you appointed two assistant presidents, uh, uh, one for domestic <laughs> affairs, one for foreign affairs, yeah, and 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 other than for the Department of Defense, the Justice Department, and the intelligence agencies. Those I think the president should keep fairly close at hand. Right, the right. Power, the true, the exercise of of the raw power that can be so easily abused. Other than that, the 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 operation of the government should be largely delegated. Um, you know, in, in the <clears throat> at the end of World War II, uh, uh, Roosevelt was very very sick. You know, mm. right mm-hmm. right at the end before he died that, that last year or so. Uh, he, you know, he wasn't he, running the country. He was you know? not really running the government, but it was a very well-run government. I mean, it was actually operating quite well, and I mean, it was massive. It was all over the world. I mean, the things that the were Marshall Plan and, and everything. Yeah, yeah. What was what was happening, um, and and so I think that it could be done. Uh, I think that the 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 president should get off of television. Really, uh, it should be more concerned with making policy and and working behind the scenes. 
uh, and let, but is, let let others be out in front of the cameras. But is that realistic in a situation where you've got to run for re-election? I mean, you know, I mean, it's, I'm just wondering. I mean, I think that that would be the best way to govern. I just, I don't know if that's the best way to get elected. Well, and these are the two, you know, sometimes, I mean, these two things shouldn't have so much of a gulf between them, but they kind of do, I find, uh, you know. Well, that's an excellent point. Um, uh, it's, and maybe that's the problem, is is getting reelected. Uh, and, and that has to do with all of the other stuff we talked about. That that if we if we made if if the voters' bill of rights was to be passed, and we were to get money out of politics, and we were to have a, a free airtime uh, for for uh, campaigning and uh, other other reforms, then the there might not be that need to always have your face in front of the people all the time. But I think that it must take a a massive ego. Uh, to uh, actually to to run for the office in the first place, yeah, um, and to uh, then and to think that you might be able to uh, accomplish the office once you were elected. Um, well, I think it's also, I mean, I think an ego is inside of the way you have to ceaselessly promote yourself um, to even really make it on the map to possibly get elected, you know, that, that ceaseless self-promotion that has to happen. Um, and you need to do it in a way that doesn't look like you're ceaselessly self-promoting yourself. Um, so it's, it's really kind of a trick in some ways, but, um, but yeah, I, I really think that it, it, it does take a certain type of person to want to do this. Um, and and I, I'm not sure that the type of person who generally wants to do this is the best suited for the governing piece of the well, of the job. It's sort of like if you if you if you were able to to accurately test you know the the CEOs of all of the major corporations in America and, and identify how many of them are sociopaths, uh, <laughs> you, you would you would give the same test to. To Congress, to to the, the president and and um, other elected officials, you might find another high correlation of sociopathy there. I'm not sure, no. but um, it, it does unfortunately require that. And well, you know, I, I say that, but I mean, I do believe that there are people in in elected office and high elected office who general gen or who are genuine public servants. I like, I don't think that they're all, I think that we, we're, we're, we become, you know, we just paint everyone with a broad brush. I don't think it's actually fair to say that. And there's people that I could name that I, I won't go into. I mean, you know, don't want to become too partisan or whatever, but there are people I can name that I'm just like, I really think that they are genuine public servants and they're there because they genuinely feel that this is the best impact they can have. Um, so I don't want to make it all about that, but it does feel like we've had this conversation before about all the people exiting Congress who are just like, I don't really see that I, you know, this isn't, this doesn't feel like a place where I can make a difference anymore. It doesn't make sense for me to do this anymore because I do want to have some sort of positive impact. And I don't see that this is the place to be able to do it in anymore. Um, so, Yeah. So essentially, I'm agreeing with you, but I just I just want to say that I I don't feel like everybody who runs for elected office is a sociopath, but um, well, I don't know. It's nor do I, of course. <laughs> but but, uh, but you know, back to I don't know that we got into it, but um, one of the things that if we had the you know when we talked about the University of the United States mm. and and part of the 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 job of the university would be to train leaders in all of the different fields, whether it's transportation, justice, um, uh, uh, diplomacy, or, or whatever. Uh, we should have people trained in those areas specifically, and 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 certainly also in political science, so that so that so that we could begin to to attract and a higher, uh, well, let's see, 
I it's okay to say I, higher caliber. I, well, I was, I gonna say, I was trying true. to think of uh, use, using your, your 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 phrase of public servants that yeah. would attract true public servants to 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 who could who could administer a government that is far less corrupt than mm -hmm. than what we're faced with uh, now. You know, I I want to I want to take on the word corrupt um, because. I guess everything is relative, right? Um, I'm not saying that there's not corruption in this government or in any government. I mean, there are. I'm not saying that there aren't corrupt things that happen. But I got to tell you something. I've lived in countries that really were corrupt, like genuinely to the bone from the tops of society to the very bottom where, you know, basically teachers were taking bribes for grades to give students. I mean, like, from the very, I mean, I think sometimes, I don't know. And from with that perspective of having lived in some of those post-Soviet countries that really um, have deep corruption in the fabric of pretty much most transactions in their lives that people make <laughs> um, versus how we live in this society. I came home and when people use the word corrupt on things, I was like, you know, I just... I just feel like that's really not quite a correct word to use or it's a, it's a, it's a, um, it felt like hyperbole to me to use the word. <laughs> and I, and I think that that's how I came across just now when I used that word. Um, I, I was thinking more political corruption than bribery corruption in terms of selling their vote, uh, or at least not to lobbyists, <laughs> I suppose. Uh, yeah. But, the I I I I I was it uh, de Tocqueville who who wrote the book uh, is that how you pronounce the Frenchman's de Tocqueville name? yeah mm -hmm. yeah um, you know one of the things he wrote about uh, when he toured America uh, uh, early on uh, yeah and the one thing he found wherever he went was how we naturally organize ourselves. And mm -hmm. into city councils and town town councils and and counties, and 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 how we organized government and how very impressed he was with the quality of our government. Well, I think that's hmm. still true. By and I think so too. Yeah, I, 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 I do. When when I when I speak of uh, corruption in government, I'm I'm really more talking about our our federal government our our, our congress like at the very top levels at the very yeah. top level of what what's really taking place in this country what we have across this country are hundreds and hundreds and thousands of commissions and boards and and uh, that that all work really well and they're nearly all volunteer to a large yeah. extent or if they are paid it's just a nominal fee for expenses and and that's really what gets the job of governing in America done. So I completely I completely agree with you. And sometimes I feel like the hyperbole that we see used now in our in our national politics, it's just like this this very simplistic broad brush that is painted across all kinds of things. When I'm just trying to say that I feel like our society actually runs generally pretty well, frankly in comparison to other societies. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, generally it really does. And I think that there is a dis there's a distortion in our own perception of things. It, sometimes it's, it's, and I think that that has to do with more, more has to do with how things are presented in the media and stuff than it has to do with actuality, a reality of, of people's experience. Um, that's my feeling, but well, even though you know we've we've certainly made our reputation around the world, you know, for our arrogance and, and other mm -hmm. things, perhaps, uh, but by and large, the world does still look at us in terms mm -hmm. of, of our government and and our and our ability to govern ourselves and 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 emulate our our institutions, and um, and uh, so given all of that. Uh, I think that we have a duty to the rest of the world to to clean up our own act and to, yeah, and, to, and, to I agree. and to evolve our government to show the rest of the world how it can be done because 
I don't know where else it could be done other than here uh, and to make the kind of change that we're talking about here, to, to really transform our government into one that is truly, truly representative of the people, that is so, truly self-governing, that we are, we are making our own policy, that we, are, that we are electing representatives who are best suited to effectuate our policies. Uh, I don't know where else it could be done. I mean, you don't think Iceland, there's places in I, Europe, Iceland and New Zealand, yeah, uh, you know, Scandinavia, Netherlands. You know, there, there are, there are certainly, uh, certainly places. Uh, Finland, uh, uh, Scandinavia, generally very progressive. Yeah, but uh, by and large, I think that we have a duty to the rest of the world to clean up our act uh, and to and to stop imposing. Uh, our our mistakes on the rest of the world. Hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, I think you're. I mean, I'm in agreement with you. I. 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 One thing I do. One thing I do wonder about, though, in terms of you know, since we're talking about like comparative politics in some way and comparative, you know, experience in different countries and societies. You know, one thing I do wonder about, though, is is some of these societies in Europe are more homogenous. And a lot of times that can make things a lot easier to do. I mean, the, 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 the size of this country and the diversity in it, and I'm not saying, I know that diversity can be a strength, but when you're trying to build a level of consensus around things, it can be really difficult to do in such large heterogeneous societies as ours. So that's one thing. I mean, I'm, when you say, that this is the place it could happen. I mean, I, I, and part of me gets what you're mean and part of me also questions it. Well, yeah, well, that's part of this, you know, American arrogance, you know, is that only. Yeah, here. the exceptionalism. Yeah, yeah, the exceptionalism that we could do that. But, but I, but, but I do think that it is the, the, the diversity of this country that, that we have the best that the world has to offer that, that has, really one way or another has found their way to these shores over the years going back thousand you know 20 30 40 50 thousand years ago whatever it took to get here it, it took exceptional people to make it and to, and to get here and to survive and and i think that uh, uh it's i i, I mean i I, I say that, but I, I I mean I recognize all of our faults as well. I yeah, could, I, know. I could spend I, know. Yeah. I could spend the time talking about that as well, but but we do have something powerful here. Special, there's something very special. special here, and and I and I think that we have to fight for it, and we have to defend it, and we have to incorporate other people into this. I mean, this is uh, this is a part of. Our, our our future is that we can't just do it here in this country. It has to be a worldwide mm -hmm. effort. We have to evolve worldwide. We there there there's it's not going to do any. It's not going to make it if we just do it here. Uh, it's gonna, yeah, and I gonna, mean the 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 types of crises we're facing are force that. I mean, the environmental crises are shared crises. They are very much shared. The climate change is a very much a shared crisis. It's not just you know. Oh, the economic, you know, one of these countries is having an economic implosion, you know, that used to be like, that's that it's, it's everywhere, you know, and so I think that it's forcing the moment where there is much more intense collaboration um, across, you know, borders to actually be able to confront what we're the challenges we have, you know, whether we can or not, I don't know, but I'm saying that's what's being demanded of us. Well, I, it's essential. It's not only political, uh, but 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 it, but it's social that that we have to 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 recognize that that we are one society on Earth. Mm -hmm. that, we, that we really are. We 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 live in different countries. We 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 speak different languages. Some of us look different than other people, but uh, but those are only superficial differences. That 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 we are one society on Earth. And and within our lifetimes, within just within just the last uh, fifty years or so, have we seen the the ability to just travel around the world, to just get on a plane and travel around the world, and when you get off, you can 
look at your cell phone and see where you're going and and uh yeah it's kind and, of amazing and, and call for yeah. an uber uh uh if you need to that's that's pretty impressive and and a lot of that did come out of world war ii where, where you said we had an objective truth at the end of world war ii as to who we were and what we were and, and where we were going and a lot of that had to do with the agreements that were made, the international agreements and so forth that came out of World War II so that we could have an international order, so that we could um, have uh, uh, have this freedom of travel today. But um, it's, 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 again, it's, it's, we can, we can only start here, but, but it, but it is going to require all of us on earth to 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 effectively govern ourselves i mean that's, mm. that's to me self governance is almost the essence of who we are uh, mm, yeah for, for you mean in terms of the American, that i mean that's the, the US. you do is you 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 come together to govern yourselves you know at first in a family in a village uh you know in a town in a city in a country um, that that we 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 have to be able to do this if we are to truly evolve off of Earth, to 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 evolve beyond this. Otherwise, it's just we're we're due for a collapse. And and uh, and and that's that's fairly sure. Uh, that, right. You know that's 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 you know that you you can't. You know, you can't you you can't look in a clear-eyed way at the evidence of things and not see that. Right. You can you you can dance around it with your mind and and try to tell yourself different things, but that's just a way of distracting yourself from. But it is a fairly sobering um, clear clarity around the fact that something fundamental has to shift in order for life on this planet to be something that. Will hap will will be will be for life on this planet to be um, you know comfortable and 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 something that we'd all you know want to have <laughs> you know a hundred two hundred years from now even you know in terms of the degradation of of environment and I mean what we what we're looking at so I mean I think I think you're right I mean I think that it's it's fairly certain whether or not we want to like see it, look it in the eye, you know, collectively, I don't know. But I think if you, in, your, in, in our, in our, in our honest moments, I think we see it, you know, we see that. And, and I, that's what I say, that that's the thing that kind of forces the level of collaboration and, and partnership and coming together ultimately um, because it is going to become a necessity. Well, the thing that frightens me is the willingness of people to accept the strong man, dictator, uh, mm -hmm. salvation, you know, who's going to save America, you know, whether, you know, no matter who it is, that that one person can do that. Uh, because I, I think that that's what you, when you go back into history, that's where you find the failure. The, the failures come when when you have a strong person in, 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 a, in a position, they can build power to a certain point, but then it fails because the, the people are not governing themselves. They they are they are not um, they are they're not you know. And I don't want to get into this because it sounds spiritual in a way, but they're not living righteous. You know that that mm -hmm. that, that, that there's a, that that that's a that's you know that's not really religious. It has to do with the bottom line of society that. That that you live in. A, in There's a, a tenant. There's a you, tenant to how we, yeah, mm -hmm. the fairness of, of of a society, and and that's where I feel that we're failing. That we're willing to accept uh, this, uh, whether it's here in this country and Hungary, uh, uh, Brazil, where, wherever you know, strong people are are popping up and saying, you know, that that and people are actually voting them into power. Then we have to, what was your, we were saying eighty years ago, right? We we fought a war over this, and that was exactly the the same problem we had then. And mm -hmm. and, we, and are we forgetting that? 
and it, and it scares me that that yeah mm-hmm. people are forgiving it, and 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 but you know this 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 inordinate amount of power though that is concentrated into the hands of one person, you know that's right. Like, that's just absolutely frightening. Well, like, what was it? H.L. Mencken, he said, absolute power corrupts absolutely. Right? You know, I love old yeah. H.L. Like, H.L. Mencken and great, great one-liners, you know. Um, but whether it's in Russia, you know, it's, or, or here, or, or in any other nuclear-powered country, the, the leader of that country has this, 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 this enormous power at hand. Uh, and, and almost... The ability to use it individually. That right. goes well, back to being a king, and that's what you know. That's what the you know. That's what that revolution was all about. Two hundred years ago was to getting away from a king who could start wars. You know, that's that's what ravaged Europe over and over and over again. Were the kings fighting the wars and the, and 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 so, you know, that's what we got to get to is, is that we 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 we. The, the the enormous power that exists today does not allow this. We we, we can't right. have that much power concentrated in the hands of one person with the ability to make war and and to and to kill with such horrible destruction. Uh, yeah, I mean, I I think that there's if you look through history, there's a yin yang kind of movement that goes where, like you said, we had a king. Then there was a revolt against the king. Then there was more self-governance. Then over time, the self-governance kind of like yields back and forth. It gets back more to more authoritarianism again. And like this back and forth. And I think I think it's because really both systems, these poles, these poles, you know, if you had like monarchy, authoritarianism, authoritarianism on one side, self-governance on the other or whatever, both systems really have their pluses and minuses. And people kind of live inside of both, and then they get tired of the ba- the, up, the 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 downside, and they start shifting toward the other one. I mean, the the fact of the matter is, self governance. It's yes, I agree with you that 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 you know cohesive self governance makes sense, and it's what we should be aiming for. It's also a hell of a lot of work, and I actually think that sometimes people want like a stronger person <clears throat> a stronger person in power makes things kind of easier and simpler sure. frankly and you know and and like and and what's what's kind of ironic in political science is that the person that this more strong man person who's in power does have an edge over those societies that have more checks and balances in place and have to, you know, and where the where the person, you know, the president or whoever has to answer to a parliament or has to answer to whoever, because authoritarian rulers can make much quicker decisions. They don't have to consult a lot of people or they've got like Putin, he has this like rubber stamp of the Duma, you know, their parliament. It doesn't, he doesn't really have to, he doesn't have to sit there for six months trying to get Congress to pass the Ukraine bill. You know, you have to do that. <laughs> so they have an edge inside of international politics, for sure. Authoritarian rulers do. Um, but ultimately, so it's also failed. that. It ultimately fails because they, they, because they make mistakes. And their yes. mistakes are magnified. Because, and they, they, or they and, eventually croak and they don't have really a, a successor. I mean, it, doesn't, it definitely isn't sustainable. But it definitely has its, um, it has its its edge. It has its it has its it has its powers in the short term, for yeah. sure. Yeah. So I mean, I think that like, but I think ultimately, like in Russia, for instance, like I think there are people in Russia where they kind of like the stronger authoritarian. I also think that the stronger authoritarian ruler in a country like Russia has been necessary in certain ways through the centuries because it's just this massive sprawling, you know, country. And it kind of needs a firmer fist just to hold the place together, frankly. (laughs) Um, That's also been a function of geography in some ways. Um, But no, but I mean, I, I agree that there's, there's kind of this swinging back and forth, you know, and, and I, I feel like in our politics, there almost feels like this swinging back and forth with almost every election cycle. Like, okay, we elect the Democrat. 
okay, now we're going to elect the conservative. Now we're going to elect the Democrat again. And it's like, we don't have like this, it feels, it feels less and less stable because it's like every four years, there's another upheaval of something or other, or other right? And it ultimately gets back to what we talked about last week or the last time is, is that the economy. And, and, uh, and, and, and if you're, if you're, hungry and you're out of work or you're not being paid enough and you're you're, you're uh, you you may be will, willing to accept an authoritarian uh, government that's going to put everybody to work and 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 make the train as Mussolini did make the trains run on time um, it's uh it's it's attractive and it's seductive even I suppose it can be when some people have been subject to a lot of uncertainty for a long time. They like the hunger for a certainty. Um, I don't th necessarily think though that this is another one of those things where I'm not entirely sure that the economy is really what's going to. I mean, I think it's important to the election, but I think there's a it's more perception than reality because. Yes, there's been inflation, but the reality is a lot of it shows there's the people's salaries and things have kept up with inflation. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like the narrative about inflation is the thing that's driving uh, people's people's votes more than the actual experience of it in terms of actually. I mean, we've all no, no trust me, I know going out to a dinner is much more expensive than it was before. You're like your eyes pop out of your head when you look at look at the bill. But I'm just saying that, by and large, I've seen studies where it's like, you know, there's been a lot that's kept a pace of the of the inflationary um, sort of pressure. So I don't know. I don't know if that's ultimately truly what's going to make the decision this time. Well, I think that, you know, I, 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 I wrote a I wrote a article one time and it was a alternative history that gore won the election that the, oh that's that interesting the, that the court voted the other way and, right, right right and 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 it was the most boring eight years in history you know 9 11 didn't happen because they they were working on the terrorist you know issues and they were dealing with all of these things and they you know they uh, and, and things got taken care of but it was all in a very low-key way and it was you know just a very boring eight years you know um uh, and I think that no Iraq war. In, a, in a way, that's what we need is a very kind of boring government that really just takes care of business and, and avoids the, the I like extremes, that. you know. I agree with you. A boring, I think that that's absolutely right. Hmm. And I actually think deep down, a lot of people would just love to have that, frankly, right. you know. I think we're worn out in some ways. <laughs> well, I think we can achieve it. Uh, we got a lot of work to do, though, Joanne. We still have uh, uh, six months uh, before this election, and and I see that our our, our time is is our uh, time our time is ticking down. Well, it's been another fun evening. The wine glass is empty, um, and you know the thoughts are brew. Uh, there's been a, a nice stew of thoughts in my in my mind. So thank you for that. It's been fun to to kind of talk about them, feel them out. Yeah. Well, what what could be what else is on the agenda? What what else is uh Well, you know, we could we could speak about I mean, it's it's a bit of an involved topic. We could talk about the environment a bit. And I don't just mean in terms of climate change and stuff, but more like governance and the environment. Um, you know, and and uh, that's I mean, there's there's been some interesting things that the Supreme Court has done recently in terms of gutting um, what we're all fearing for those of us who work in the field, um, you know, uh, fearing what's going to happen with the, you know, you know, bedrock environmental sort of legislation that's been passed now for 50, 60 years um, seems to be on the chopping block or it seems to be coming up for consideration. So I find that very, um, that could be an interesting conversation is all I'm going to say. Yeah. I don't know, but what about you, William? Well, let's see what's going on in the news. Yeah, uh, <laughs> exactly. I think that, I let's think hope that, for boredom. Can we hope for boredom? But I don't think we're going to get it. 
No, there's a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of stuff going on. Uh, and it's, it's actually, um, it's threatening uh, in a lot of ways mm -hmm. on, on a lot of levels, you know, that, that, uh, and I, but I, again, without getting into all of that on, on a, on a week by week basis, it's, it is, uh, it is interesting to tune in uh, and, and, and watch the, watch the, watch the daily trials uh, as they take place. But um, anyway, Joanne. Yes. Uh, it's been an interesting uh, couple of months, and yeah, and I'm looking forward to uh, future conversations. It seems that we've decided to maybe continue talking a little longer. Yeah. And uh, all of you folks that have stuck around this long to listen to us, we appreciate your your hanging around for our, for the hour and. Uh, and you know, William, I have a suggestion. Maybe some folks want to put some suggestions in the in you know where, what they think that might be an oh, interesting topic to excellent. Yes. touch on. Okay, folks, uh, you know, not only do you want to subscribe when when you're done here and ring the bell so that you get notifications, <laughs> so, uh, always be sure to share because that's the only way this movement is going to to spread is if uh, on it, by uh, by mouth by word of mouth and by by sharing, but also go to the comments. And, and if there's a topic you would like for us to discuss that we have not discussed, put it in the comments and we will move it to the top of the top of the list. Yeah. So, so uh, William, what about your book? I think you should always hold the book up at the end. Ah, uh, the, the book. voters. Oh, is the, the book. voters around? Ah, uh, the vote, the, here it is. Ah! <laughs> We got to do a little, a tiny bit of just a touch of promotion here at the very. Oh well, it's, it's, it's not just promotion, but it is transforming America. It is transforming America, and certainly it's it's a good history of the country, a good history, the political history of the country, and it does discuss the Voters' Bill of Rights. But also, uh, if you're interested in any of my books, go to WilliamJohnCox.com. They're all there for free. Uh, and if you want a print copy, you can go to Amazon and you can get them at cost. If you are interested in the philosophy, the philosophy of mankind, uh, mankind.info has, uh, has the books of philosophy. And finally, for those of you who are interested in the vote, uh, the election, the vote.io has the uh, Voters' Bill of Rights there. It also has the... Uh, a uh, copy of the petition I filed in the Supreme Court six years ago uh, during during the... Uh, 20, the one that got stamped. 2018. No, the one that did not get stamped. <laughs> the one that did not get stamped. Well, the oh, one yes. That the one that did not get stamped. That, that, that Justice Roberts would not even allow in the door. <laughs> uh, but certainly... It touched a nerve. It touched a nerve. Yes. So, anyway, cheers, folks. Cheers. 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 And cheers to you. For the American people, may your consent to be governed never be, never be taken for granted. Very well. <laughs> Till next time. Till next time. <laughs>